So that's a great way to start episode 380 of Neural Next Week for July 18th, 2019. And I think it transitions pretty well into our second story. Keeping on like the, the big, massive stories, James. Scientists find man-made climate change doesn't exist in practice. A new scientific study could bust wide open deeply flawed fundamental assumptions underlying controversial climate legislation and initiatives such as, of course, the Green New Deal. Namely, the degree to which climate change is driven by natural phenomena versus man-made issues measured, of course, by Goldman Sachs and Al Gore's as your carbon footprint. Scientists in Finland found practically no anthropogenic man-made climate change after a series of studies. During the last hundred years, the temperature increased about 0.1% Celsius because of carbon dioxide. The human contribution was about 0.01% Celsius. Or, 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 at that, yeah, yeah, Celsius. We're talking about uh, temperatures. The Finnish researchers bluntly state in one among a series of papers, and we'll include those in the links. This has been corroborated by a team at Kobe University in Japan, which furthered the Finnish researchers' theory, saying new evidence suggests that high energy particles from space, known as galactic cosmic rays, affect the Earth's climate by increasing cloud cover, causing an umbrella effect. The just study, published study has found a summary of which released it in Science Journal, which we will also link to. The findings are hugely significant given this umbrella effect, an entirely natural occurrence, could be the prime driver of climate warming and not man-made factors. If we pay attention to the fact that only a small part of the increased CO2 concentration is anthropogenic, we have to recognize that the anthropogenic climate change does not exist in practice, the researchers conclude. The study is called Winter Monsoons Became Stronger During Geomagnetic Reversal, but we'll include the link straight to the PDF research. No experimental evidence for the significant anthropogenic climate change. James, is this a, another kind of blockbuster story, or am I maybe reading too much into this and we don't know enough yet about these studies? Uh, well, the, uh, yes, if this was a single study and this was the only sort of data that we had to go on, it would just be a starting point. But it isn't a starting point. It comes within the context of a lot of research that's been done about uh, the sun and its driving of cloud formation and how that is a, a, a feedback in the climate system that uh, disproves the anthropogenic global warming hypothesis. And there's a lot of research on that. I've talked, uh, for example, to uh, his name is going to escape my mind at the moment but i did talk to him <laughs> about his work on cloud formation and all of that several years ago now anyway i'll i'm sure i'll think of it before the end of the episode you did say 0.1 percent celsius and 0.01 percent celsius you meant of course degree celsius but um i hope people will look into this this latest research and and hopefully into the context of this research that shows that yes newsflash it's the sun, stupid. Not a uh, difficult uh, thing to uh, conclusion to come to when you're looking at the data objectively, but no one is. And I, I, I'm certainly not holding my breath for the uh, climate doomsayers to actually admit that they have been chicken littles, uh, crying about nothing. It's almost like this is based on nothing really scientific. Uh, as evidenced by, you will remember from uh, my shock UN warning just three years left to save the earth video um, from 2017 where the UN was saying we had until 2020 essentially um, and I went through all of the various predictions of doom that have come and gone over the years including one that Prince Charles issued back in 2009 just 96 months to save the world says Prince Charles uh, and when that 96 months is expired in 2015, suddenly we have just 35 years to save the planet from climate change. And now here we are in July 2019, and now we have the next 18 months will decide climate change success, says Prince Charles. <laughs> I mean, it's almost like they're just picking numbers randomly out of a hat, and it has no basis in scientific research whatsoever. Oh, wait, that's exactly what's happening. But... I, I'm sure, as always, I will get a lot of feedback from people who say, but James, just because these inbred eugenics obsessed elite who are completely lying to us about everything and ha don't have our best interests in mind are wrong about everything, doesn't mean they're wrong about this. Well, actually, in this case, yes, it does mean that they're wrong about this. And here's another study, another link in the chain proving that it is the sun driving climate. James, actually, just this past week, I always do my This Day in History every morning on the shows. The Prince Charles 96 months warning is 10 years old this very week. 
and, and again, this is a, a, something else I, I, I talk about a lot on the show, as you do as well. It is no normal person really wants to be destructive and awful and wreck everything. Your natural inclination is to want to be a nice person who cleans up after themselves. All of that is being misdirected. And, and like you're saying, as the Club of Rome wrote, blaming people for climate would fit the bill. And they that's how they're going to try and, and, and are doing it drastically rearranging society or like they might be giant said the sun is a massive incandescent gas James. dr richard Lindzen was the name ah. i was looking for so i will throw the link back to interview 255 from the archives and you will forgive me for forgetting that uh, that name but it has been nine years since i talked to him so perhaps you'll forgive me in my old age but yes dr richard Lindzen has been talking about some of these uh these issues before so i'll direct people there We'll direct people to our respective sites for more on this and other breaking news and information. James, we'll leave it there for this week. Looking forward to it again. All right, buddy. Thanks. Take care. I'm an atmospheric physicist. I've published more than 200 scientific papers. For 30 years, I taught at MIT, during which time the climate has changed remarkably little. But the cry of global warming has grown ever more shrill. In fact, it seems that the less the climate changes, the louder the voices of the climate alarmists get. So let's clear the air and create a more accurate picture of where we really stand on the issue of global warming, or as it is now called, climate change. There are basically three groups of people dealing with this issue. Groups one and two are scientists. Group three consists mostly at its core of politicians, environmentalists, and media. Group one is associated with the scientific part of the United Nations International Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC Working Group One. These are scientists who mostly believe that recent climate change is primarily due to man's burning of fossil fuels, oil, coal, and natural gas. This releases CO2, carbon dioxide, into the atmosphere, and they believe this might eventually dangerously heat the planet. Group two is made up of scientists who don't see this as an especially serious problem. It's the group I belong to. We're usually referred to as skeptics. We note that there are many reasons why the climate changes, the sun, clouds, oceans, the orbital variations of the Earth, as well as a myriad of other inputs. None of these is fully understood, and there is no evidence that CO2 emissions are the dominant factor. But actually, there is much agreement between both groups of scientists. The following are such points of agreement. One, the climate is always changing. Two, CO2 is a greenhouse gas without which life on Earth is not possible, but adding it to the atmosphere should lead to some warming. Three, atmospheric levels of CO2 have been increasing since the end of the Little Ice Age in the 19th century. Four, over this period, past two centuries, the global mean temperature has increased slightly and erratically by about 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit or 1 degree Celsius. But only since the 1960s have man's greenhouse emissions been sufficient to play a role. Five, given the complexity of climate, no confident prediction about future global mean temperature or its impact can be made. The IPCC acknowledged in its own 2007 report that, quote, the long-term prediction of future climate states is not possible, end quote. Most importantly, the scenario that the burning of fossil fuels leads to catastrophe isn't part of what either group asserts. So why are so many people worried, indeed panic-stricken, about this issue? Here's where group three comes in, the politicians, environmentalists, and media. Global warming alarmism provides them, more than any other issue, with the things they most want. For politicians, it's money and power. For environmentalists, it's money for their organizations and confirmation of their near-religious devotion to the idea that man is a destructive force acting upon nature. 
And for the media, it's ideology, money, and headlines. Doomsday scenarios sell. Meanwhile, over the last decade, scientists outside of climate physics have jumped on the bandwagon, publishing papers blaming global warming for everything from acne to the Syrian civil war. And crony capitalists have eagerly grabbed for the subsidies that governments have so lavishly provided. Unfortunately, Group 3 is winning the argument because they have drowned out the serious debate that should be going on. But while politicians, environmentalists, and media types can waste a lot of money and scare a lot of people, they won't be able to bury the truth. The climate will have the final word on that. I'm Richard Linson, Emeritus Professor of Atmospheric Sciences at MIT for Prager University. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, click here. To help keep our videos free, donate here.